joining me. Today we're going to talk about observations and inferences. Our objective is that the student will distinguish between observations and inferences to analyze a situation and determine what happened with the mysterious footprints. Before we, get, we begin, we need to really define what an observation is. An observation is any information that is collected with the senses, so taste, touch, smell, hearing, feeling, all of that. So we have two different types of observations. First, we have a quantitative observation. What does quantitative sound like? If you're anything like me, you would have automatically picked up that quantitative sounds like quantity, and that's exactly what it is. It's measurable or countable. It will have a quantity in the description. For instance, three meters long, not just long, four marbles, 50 kilograms, 35 degrees Celsius. They must be measurable. And then finally, we have a qualitative analysis. What does qualitative sound like? If you're anything like me, you would have written that it sounds like quality because it describes the quality of something. It's only describable. It is not measurable. The flowers are red. There's not a redometer that lets us know the color of things. We just know that it's red. It's not really measurable. This smells to me like fresh baked cookies. There's not a fresh baked cookie meter. We can't really measure it. It's just describable. It tastes bitter. Things taste different to other people, so you're just describing the quality of some stuff. In your journals, I'd like you to write down, just on the next sheet of paper, I want you to write down several qualitative and quantitative observations about the room you're in right now. Remember to include a number if you're talking about quantitative, and include something that's describable but not measurable if you're talking about qualitative. Observations are good for scientists because it helps us hone the skill of describing specific scientific events. From an observation, we can make an inference. And an inference is just a conclusion or a deduction based upon what we've experienced with our senses. If you see a car that's wrecked and it is raining outside, you can infer that because I noticed it's rain, raining, because I observed that it's raining, I can infer that the car slid on the road and crashed into a tree. So an inference is the process of drawing a conclusion from given evidence or observations. So let's practice. I hear people screaming. I smell cotton candy, popcorn, and hamburgers. And I see a whole lot of people. What can I infer about this situation? Where would you be if you heard people screaming, smelled cotton candy and popcorn and hamburgers, and saw a lot of people? What would you infer? Write that down in your journal next. What I would imagine is quite possibly a fair. And bear with me, my handwriting is horrible, but using this new technology makes it even worse. So maybe a fair, okay? Maybe a parade. Maybe six flags. So fair, parade, six flags. Could be any of those things. We would only know if you were there. But if someone said, I hear people screaming, I smell cotton candy, popcorn, and hamburgers, and I see lots of people, where am I? You could say those three things and pretty much be correct. Now on the worksheet that I gave you today, I want you to look at these two sets of animal tracks. Under the first frame, I want you to list three observations that you notice about these footprints and then make an inference as to what you think is going on. I want you to do that in your journal on that piece of paper at this time. Pause the screen when you feel like it. Remember that you're controlling me at this point, me being in a movie. Now I've added another frame to this, so on your paper I want you to write down what you see is going on, what you observe is happening, and what you can infer, not only about both animals or both dinosaurs, but what you can infer about their interaction that's going on right now. Write that down on your paper in your journal. Finally, we see the third and final frame. Something's happened here. I'm observing some things, and I can make an inference about what I think happened. I want you to do that at this time.
In your science book, I want you to write, write a conclusion. Conclusions are the most important thing we're going to be doing all year. It's where you actually put what you learned to an understandable fact that you'll write. It needs to be a paragraph. On your paper, it's going to say two to three sentences. You are all better and brighter than that. I want a minimum of four sentences. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. I cannot wait to teach you tomorrow.